Hey guys, welcome to another video. Alicia here. Today I have three pieces to show to you and it's going to be my pieces for the next three days of Inktober. So today you're going to be seeing days two, three, and four. And before we get started, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone who watched my day one painting. I've just kind of been blown away by the support you guys have been showing and it's just, it's so, so encouraging and it makes me really happy to know that you guys are looking forward to seeing these and that you enjoyed that first one so much. So just like with my first piece, I'm mostly going to be working with colored inks again for these pieces and I will be leaving links to all of those down in the description so you can check out what exactly I'm using. I'm not going to be talking about my supplies too much in this video because I really want to take some time to answer some of the questions that you guys have had about Inktober. And to get started, I think a really good place to look would be this comment that was left by Jacqueline in my community tab where I asked you guys four questions regarding Inktober. And Jacqueline said, maybe I'm old and old fashioned, but I don't understand the point of these month related drawing prompts. The writing world has them too, but why is it necessary? After drawing what one is told throughout one's school life, why follow the prompts of others? I understand using prompts when one is facing a creative block, however, to me, it's one thing to find prompts to help me with a slump, and yet another to follow prompts for an entire month for the sake of what? Completion, bragging rights, undue stress. I see many comments, how do I avoid burnout completing October, feelings of failure, inadequate, inadequacy, etc. To be honest, I personally only heard of Inktober a couple years ago, and I thought it was someone's idea of a cruel prank on artists. To be honest, I love this comment because I think that Jacqueline has hit on something that is really, really important, not just for Inktober, but for the art community in general, and especially in regards to these month-long drawing challenges. So Inktober isn't the only month-long drawing challenge in existence. There's also Drawtober, which is just drawing every day, also in the month of, of October. But there's Mermaid in May and all kinds of things that I'm not even going to try to make a list of them. But the idea of month-long drawing challenges has really gained popularity over the last few years. And while they can be really helpful sometimes to boost creativity and help artists to to develop daily drawing habits. I think there is also this underlying negative toxicity that can affect people as well. And I thought that addressing this as a whole can really help to address some of your other concerns about burnout and how to keep going throughout the whole month and all that kind of stuff. And I think the first question that you have to answer is, what's the point of Inktober? Why are you doing it? On the official Inktober website, it says that the purpose is to focus on improving drawing skill and developing positive habits. That's it. That's the purpose. Get better, practice, and do what you enjoy. And specifically in ink, it's about limiting yourself and seeing how you can be creative within the realm of fewer supplies. So it could be as simple as a piece of white paper and black ink, taking those two simple things and pushing your creativity to fill in the gap. I think that a lot of times people can get caught up in the idea of I have to post every day and I need this to be visible and get likes and let people find me and and especially those of us who make YouTube videos could be trying to push ourselves to make daily videos and it really gets into that whole mindset of if it's not on the internet it's not real or it's not valid or it doesn't matter if you don't post it on the internet and that really goes outside of the entire purpose of challenges like this as far as I'm concerned. Really what we should be trying to do during a month like this is encouraging ourselves to try new things and to push our boundaries creatively. And the reason that challenges like this is it's really just kind of a foundation, something to say, hey, are you looking for a reason to do a thing? Here's a reason, Inktober, do a thing. And really that should be the heart of it and that should be the core of it. And I think a big part of the reason that people get burned out or stressed is that we're pushing ourselves so hard to be validated by the internet. 
I mean, we're like, oh my goodness, I have to do this every day and I have to post and it has to get likes and I have to get views on my videos. And that's just toxic. And none of that has anything to do with drawing or improving as an artist. And it's just chaos. As an example, for me, when I was thumbnailing ideas for this project, I was so excited because I felt like I was finally allowing myself to explore topics and subject matter that I had always wanted to create. And I say that and then I ask myself, well, why didn't I just do it before? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, as a content creator, I try to create a wide variety of types of videos. So sometimes I'm doing reviews or talking about a specific subject or doing a time lapse of a painting. And I have things that are geared for a specific goal. And with Inktober, I'm actually trying to loosen up and just go, I want to limit myself to using ink and paper for the most part and see what I can do and see how I can explore the subjects I want to explore. So even though it seems a little backwards in that I'm loosening up in times when I have this more rigid structure of a month long challenge, I think that's one of the biggest keys to making it through the entire month is doing the things you want to do anyway. So even in prompt lists, like for example, I think the prompts of the first two days in the official list were poisonous for day one and tranquil for day two. How I would accommodate those prompts, by the way, I'm not following an official prompt list this year. I'm just exploring ideas that I want to explore and subject matter that I'm excited about, but that would still apply if I was following the prompt list. So when I think of poisonous, there are specific ways that I can take the kind of things I like to paint and apply that sort of theme to it. And the same thing with tranquil. For example, this is my day one, three piece. So if this piece was for the theme of tranquil, I would say that, yeah, I'd be happy with putting that in and saying that, hey, this goes along with the theme of tranquil because when I think of tranquility and a peaceful mind, there's just something very soothing about clouds in a blue sky. And I don't know. So I guess it's really about your own interpretation of a piece and it can be as loose or as rigid as you want. This is not a competition or a battle for prestige or trying to create something that the internet will like. And of course, that's not exclusive to month long challenges. It has a lot to do with being an artist and posting on the internet in general. Sure, we want to be visible and we want to grow our audience, but it has to start and stem and just thrive on, I want to make these things and the people who want to see what I make will follow along and the people that it doesn't matter to won't. And I know it's so very hard to stay in that specific mindset. But that's the approach that I'm really, really pushing on myself during the month of October. I, I've also found it to be really important for me. I mentioned that I've been doing some thumbnails, so smaller versions of pieces that I might want to turn into larger things for Inktober. 
and I didn't do all 31 thumbnails at once. And I think that's actually really important. Now, not that most people would do all of them at once. I mean, maybe you would do them all before you'd start anything. But for me, I like to have the variety of being able to mix up my workflow. So on one day, I might paint one or two illustrations. So I might do more than one in a day. And the next day, I'll only do thumbnails. So only work on sketching. And the next day, I would edit the video of the pieces I've completed so far. This is just kind of in my mind breaking up the flow so that each day doesn't look the same. It's not each day I'm like paint a piece and post a piece and make a video of that piece. I think that having a variety so that every day doesn't look the same is really important for me as a full-time artist. Okay, so what if you're not a full-time artist? What if you don't have hours a day to dedicate to putting this stuff together? Well, I have some tips for you there as well. The first thing that I would say is allow yourself to create something loose and simple. So for me, these pieces may look like finished illustrations to you. I mean, maybe they do, maybe they don't, I don't know. But I didn't spend more than... Hmm. On the actual painting portion, I didn't spend more than like an hour on each one, which compared to my watercolor illustrations is a very small amount of time. Overall, the amount of footage I had for these three pieces was less than what I normally have for one painting in a painting video, like my watercolor videos. So I allowed myself to do pieces that would not take as long, that I could complete in less time, and part of that it's not just so that I can create more content, it is, but it's also because I'm trying really hard not to stress myself out. I really don't want this to be something that I push for, and I don't want to make it work for myself. I want to enjoy the process of challenging myself to try new things. And as the month progresses, I want to kind of simplify it more and more even, just use more of just black ink and paper and ink washes. We're going to be getting more into that as the month progresses and just doing more in black and white and experimenting with texture and how the ink flows. I just, I want to loosen up even more as the month goes on and experiment more with brush strokes and hatching and texture. And really, I'm just trying not to put too much pressure on myself. Maybe I'll make a piece every day, maybe I won't, that's okay. And I also haven't mentioned this before, but this is my third year participating in Inktober. And the first year I tried really hard to do something every single day, and I was pushing myself really hard. I was a young artist, as far as young in my art, and I wasn't happy with the majority of the things I made, but I wanted to post every day and I wanted to, to be out there and visible, and that ended up being more stress than it was worth, and I ended up making a lot of art that I didn't like. The second year, I was actually on vacation for half of the month of October, so I didn't really participate very much, but when I had time while we were on vacation, maybe I would get out a brush pen or something and do a little ink sketch and post it if I could, and that was a much more relaxed approach, and I think I made one video by that time I had started my YouTube channel, and one video talking about what I had learned from the month as a whole, and that was really fun. I did more fan art for Dragon Age, which is my favorite video game series, and it was really enjoyable. And this year I have been exploring a lot of my own original concepts, and it's my first year doing Inktober as a full-time artist. And so it's just every year has looked a little bit different for me. And it's a great opportunity to kind of snapshot the year as a whole, the month each month from each year, and to see where I was at as an artist and the kind of things I was doing, the kind of goals I was setting for myself and how that varied. And it's just really interesting for me looking back and seeing how it kind of matures and shifts and changes as the years go on. Oh my goodness, you guys have left me so many amazing questions, and I know I've only just started to touch on a couple of them, but don't worry, we've got lots more videos to go throughout the course of this month. I hope you guys are doing well and you're not putting too much pressure on yourself. Just have fun and enjoy the process and just create something that you'll be happy to look back on at the end of the month. So I hope this has been helpful. And I will see you guys next time for our next Inktober set of pieces and videos and 
things like that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I will see you all next time. Bye! Thank you.